Welcome back to Real House DIY. To have a review of the APEC Reverse Osmosis Water Filtration System. As part of that review, I'll also be replacing the carbon and sediment filters. There's a lot to like about this system, but there's one con that I do not like. Stick around, I'll show you what that is. First, for a general overview, the one that I ordered came with this chrome beverage faucet. And that's standard, you can get different colors, or use your own if you get the one that matches your kitchen faucet. Get plenty of materials, instruction manual, a couple of these large wrenches for changing the filters. As far as installation, it's actually very straightforward, just following the directions. Right here is where you connect on to the cold water line. It uses this piece right here that connects in line. That's the braided hose for the cold water, and then that's the faucet hose. So this one with the red line, that's the piece that they send to tap that cold water. Comes in here to your filters. You have these three filters here, the sediment and two carbon filters. Then up on top you have the membrane filter and the carbon TCR filter, stage four and five filters. For how often you need to replace the filters, depends on how much water you use. I replace the stage one, two, and three filters once per year. Filters on top more like every three or four years. So your water is going to pass through the first four filters here, and then the last one it's connected over here to your tank. And then from there it goes up this line here. And that goes up to your beverage faucet. Everything actually fits very nicely under the cabinet here, leaving some extra room in the front. And even the tank wasn't too bad, I was able to fit that tank back there, you know, fitting it strange angle to get it in at first without having to take off this garbage disposal. All the connections are made with this type of push fitting. As you can see when it's pushed in you try to pull it out. It has a grip on that. If you want to take this off hold this piece down and then that will come out. And you can see if this isn't cut perfectly straight then after this is inserted that can cause it to leak. So if, any, if you get any slight leaking from these, you can turn off your water, try doing a nice flush cut, you know, a nice 90 degree, reinsert it, see if it's leaking. And APEC is really good. I had one of these that was still leaking. After making sure all those were, uh, were good, they sent me a new one. Next on your tank here, this is actually what's gonna pressurize the water from your beverage faucet. So if you're ever not happy, with the water pressure there, you can just take your standard bike pump connected here, inflate it if you want higher pressure, let some air out if you want lower. As part of a reverse osmosis water filtration system, you're gonna have some waste water. That's what this black line is showing. And for that, connects to the saddle where you drill into your drain pipe. And this is actually a very nice connection that's never leaked. So as this is filtering more water and filling up the tank after you use some water, you can hear some of that drain water going into the drain. Next in terms of the water quality you get, I actually have city water here. And you can tell my filters, they're pretty clean every time I change them. But we don't really like the taste of the city water, so the reverse osmosis water is best. And I never really trust the city water, regardless of the test results they send on a yearly basis. And by far the biggest difference that you notice beside the taste when you do a side-by-side -side comparison of the taste of the water, you can actually t tell that there's a smell in the city water and that smell is absent from the reverse osmosis water. Okay, so next to replace the three filters, the carbon filters and sediment filter, you're just gonna need the large wrench. Every time you buy these filters, they resend a copy of the instructions, which is really nice easy to follow. And this is the one thing I don't like about this system every time I replace the filters. I always have lots of rags and towels here because these cases that hold the filters here, when you take these off, they're fill, filled up right to the top with water and I always end up spilling some. And for this system, that's definitely the, the one con that I don't like. Everything else is awesome, but there, I have some friends and neighbors who have different reverse osmosis systems and they don't spill water when they change the filters. They're a little bit simpler in that aspect. So first step is to turn off the water. 
You can turn off your water supply down below in the basement if you want to, if you have that one. Or you can just turn this here. And actually closing this one, you'll still have your kitchen faucet water, you just won't have the reverse osmosis purified water while you're changing the filters. So that's closed. Then you close the valve on the tank. It's a quarter turn for that one. Next on the beverage faucet, you open that up, let out any pressure there. Now to replace the filters, we're just gonna use the large wrench. From top down, you're gonna be turning the wrench clockwise. And when you use the wrench, the little lip here just connects onto the, the bars. So you can see that fills right to the top with water. You just dump this right out into the sink. And this filter here, that's the sediment filter. It's actually pretty clean, except you can see a tiny bit of debris down at the bottom. This is a point where you check this O-ring to make sure that's not damaged. And then you can clean out the inside of here. And the filter gets discarded. I'll leave it in the sink for now. There's the new sediment filter, and orientation up or down doesn't matter as long as it's seated on in the middle indent there. And while well, that one out of the way, I'm going to loosen up that middle one. So with that middle one loosened, go ahead and put that side on with the sediment filter on. And I'll just get that hand tight for now. Getting the middle filter out. And again, that's filled right to the top of the water. This one you can tell has some, some build up here. This is one of the carbon filters. I got the new carbon filters as well. And same for this one, there's no real orientation here. So just make sure that the seat's right in the middle. And again, check the O-ring, make sure that's not damaged at all. Put this one back on, hand tight for now. And I'll get the last one loosened. And this one, just like that second stage, this is the third stage, another carbon filter. Check the O-ring. Can clean out any debris that's inside. At this point, I'll dry up the water that's on the floor. Not too bad, but always a risk of completely dumping one of these on your kitchen floor. Then get the last carbon filter back in for the third stage. So I'll finish tightening up the middle one first while I have better access there.
and finish tidying up first and third stages. tricky to get leverage on these. Okay, so those are all tightened up. So next in the direction says to keep the valve on the tank closed. While you open up this valve. And you can hear these filling up with water. Obviously check for leaks. And it says turn on the faucet lever. And let purified water run for 10 to 15 minutes. So while it's doing this, filling up, I'm checking for leaks. I'll also dry off any water spots here, so it'll be easier to see if anything's leaking and needs to be tightened a little more. Let's check again here. Yeah, it says change filters stage one, two, and three every six to 12 months. I change them once a year. Highly depend on how much water you're actually using. And again, the stage four membrane every two to four years. Same for the stage five carbon TCR filter, change every two to four years. So the stage four and five filters, I'll be changing those out next year. I'll get a video when that's finished. Confident there's no leaks here. We put this back under the sink. And again, since I'm moving this around, after this is back under here, I'll continue to check for leaks after all this is back in place. And while we're letting this run for 10 to 15 minutes to get purified water through, you can see why we need the tank. This can only purify water so fast, you see these bubbles moving through here, and the small trickle of water. If you didn't have that pressurized tank where you filter the water, build it up in the tank, then you wouldn't get any more than that trickle of water at any given time. So while you're not running the beverage faucet for purified water, it's filling up the tank. Then when you need water, the tank is full and you have that purified water. Finally, last step, now that water has been running for 10 to 15 minutes, turn off the beverage faucet, open up the valve on the tank. And now we should have nice pressurized Water there, still getting some air out. And you'll notice for a few days, when you fill up a glass of water, once you have these brand new filters in here, your glass of water will have a lot more tiny little bubbles in it, which is to be expected. That takes a couple of days to work that out. Just thanks for watching. Yes, I would buy this system again. It's a really good price point, really good water. And the one con, having to change those filters one time a year, a little bit of annoyance having the spilled water, a little bit hard to turn the wrench, but only having to do that once a year, it's not so bad. So for that reason, probably give this four to five stars, but I'm not sure next time I might do a little bit more research, try to find something that's a little bit easier for changing those filters. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe.